Hi there everybody, welcome to another video. On this one I have this uh, Honda Jazz 2006 and um, this is a 1.4 automatic. Uh, basically the problem I'm having is that the airbag light here is remaining on. Now um, I've already checked the the full codes which I will uh, put a list on here. Um, which is showing uh, there's a, a short short circuit to ground or something like that uh, but also it's this um, airbag passenger side and airbag driver side uh, so it's a few fault codes actually I try resetting them uh, with the computer and it's not resetting and uh, also I tried uh, the trick of resetting the module by uh, removing the yellow wire from the fuse box there and then you have to short it and wait a few seconds. Um, there's some instructions on the internet if um, if you're going to do that. But um, that didn't work either. It actually, it does reset it. It goes off, but it comes back on again. So, um, the OBD port, the OBD computer is, um, is more or less showing me that the the module, the airbag module is faulty. Um, now the airbag module in this car, it's located somewhere under this center console here. Um, so we need to remove it to access. We need to remove all this uh, plastic covering here. Now it isn't that difficult to move. Um, so basically to move this <coughs> center cover there is two we'll have a look at that there is two phillips screws at the back here one there which i already removed and the other one will be there and uh, these are the two phillips screws or star, whatever you want to call them. Um, you can then, this cover will then pop up. You can, it will have some resistance, but you just need to push it up and it will unplug from the, from the front basically. But uh, cause I already pulled it, um, it unplugged and now it's very easy to lift. But um, it had a bit of resistance and then and you just need to pull it. So once you've done that, you will also want to remove these little plastic retaining clips that are on the corner. So you push the center a little bit, don't push it all the way through, just push it a little bit and then you'll be able to remove this. Um, which I don't want to lose it, so I'll put it in there. And uh, there will be another one on that side. You can see it down there. And with all of that off, which isn't really that much, um, you can also pull the handbrake up and take this cover out. Again, this little cover literally pulls out. It's just plugged in there, so it really you just plug, um, literally pull it out like that that's just gonna give a little bit of room for this uh, to come out through that handbrake thing so then you can lift the whole thing up and take it out and I'm sure it will be plugged in um, down there because we have the the cigarette thing lighter or the charger whatever it is so we may need to unplug that from there before we can actually completely remove this because we also have um, the auxiliary thing for the uh, for the radio right so Okay, 
just a little bit. I may need my two hands to unplug it, but we'll be uh, able to get this out. So let me just go ahead and do that. Okay, so once you get rid of the that center area, um, so basically this just you press on the little clip there, you press it and take it out. Same, similar. But this one actually just pulled out, but. But um, nevertheless, um, you can then take this carpet out here. If you take the carpet out a little bit, you will find that module there. And uh, that's what we are going to remove. That is the module that we're going to remove now i can see it's got some uh, torx um, screws on it so i'm gonna get that okay so just before i disconnect that i um i uh, disconnected the battery just in case so my battery is not um, connected so the car is dead at the moment um so we can then go ahead and remove those forks and then we'll be able to unplug the unit uh, this is the torques uh, are t30s t30 screws which is uh, a little bit tight so I'm just gonna use my two hands to undo them okay so I've loosened the uh, the two uh, screws that are holding the module back here but uh, the module is still secure so there must be another screw somewhere down there uh, which means we may need to remove this part here so I'm just trying to figure out how to get this bit of plastic out of here uh, I don't think it's that hard to take it out, but it might be it might be a matter of fiddling a little bit about with it. Looks like this part needs to go down. Okay, so there's <laughs> there's actually a little sort of securing tape here on the side. If we can get that out. Um, now where did I? Well, I dropped it somewhere in there. I'll have to get it out. So if we can bring that down, we may actually be able to pull this whole thing out of here somehow. Also, uh, there was a sponge. This sponge was just sitting in there, so I just pulled it out. Now we should be able to somehow. Okay, so on the sides here, there is two of those uh, button type of retaining plastic clips. So I got them out, there was one there. And there was one, another one there, so they were sort of hiding under the carpet. That releases um, this thing, which seems to just come out. Because it doesn't seem to be attached. Right, so that comes out as a one unit. Um, but this this part, the one with the white bit there, the white clip, doesn't actually come out. So that remains in there. Okay, and this is where our SRS module is. 
so I disconnected the battery as I mentioned already we can then disconnect this occasionally it's a matter of cleaning these contacts and it makes a difference um, so I wonder if I can do that and check if I can release uh, delete the fold code before okay so I cleaned those with some electrical uh, liquid which is especially, especially Let's plug that side and then I'm going to plug this side. I'm going to plug the battery. If by uh, cleaning that would make any difference, sometimes it does. It does, usually it does in uh, BMWs and things. Cars, that, that sort of model. Um, okay. Now, uh, read the trouble codes. Read the current trouble codes. Right, so at the moment I go open or increase resistance in passenger side airbag. Um, I had a list of all codes before, so uh, uh, now I'm going to try and clear that. Uh, DTC is having clear. Turn ignition switch off. And turn it on. Right, it says it has been erased, but I mean, I can still see it there. So, I don't think it's really done much. Okay, so still there. On my previous video, um, I basically was showing you the location of the SRS unit. Um, which is that one down there. In this video, um, I'm just gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna be changing the SRS unit. So there is a procedure uh, to do that. The, according to some instructions uh, from a Honda, Honda website, um, the fault code I have is a 1201 and basically showing me there is a, a open or high resistance um, on the side airbag inflator um, so there is a procedure also to to check the side airbag inflator um, and what basically what they ask you to do is uh, they ask you to check the resistance um, and also they ask you to put a simulator an inflator simulator on the under the seat in this case is the passenger side so <clears throat> the first thing they ask you to do is disconnect the battery and leave it disconnected for three minutes which I've already done all of this um, and according and according to their uh, their conclusions it seems like uh, there is a uh, that the, the problem is with the unit rather than that the inflate rather than, than the inflator itself so um the connection for this it's under the seat here which is that one there so before you disconnect that like I said, they ask you to wait for three minutes. And once once you disconnect it, there is a special tool. So it's like a little box, Honda little box. I'll, I'll put a, a part number for it. I just haven't got it, but at the moment, but I, um, I borrowed one to use. It comes with a cable as well. You have to get the cable and a little box. Um, which basically simulates a uh, two ohms uh, resistance. I mean, I guess you could use a two ohm resistor as well, um, but if you use, it's a lot easier to use the box, obviously. So you disconnect this cable 
um, you plug in the box <clears throat> um, into the cable you plug in the wire into the cable that comes from the, the, the SRS unit you leave the one that's connected to the seat behind so you plug in the cable onto that, uh, the wire from the SRS and then plug that special cable into the the little two ohms box that Honda uses uh, you can then um, try to delete the fault code you use your OBD and you try to delete the fault code and then and therefore delete the uh, obviously you can connect the battery and then go ahead and disconnect uh, try to delete the fault code now what it says is it if it does not clear if if the fault doesn't clear then go and disconnect the battery again wait for three minutes um, then it tells you to go and disconnect <clears throat> the cable that connects to the inflator here the airbag inflator so that there's just a cover there plugged in this cover here is plugged in there like so you can just pull it out pull that out and then you will see this connector inside of there I basically I just took it out of its clip it's clipped on the inside so I took it out so I can disconnect it so again before you disconnect that they ask you to wait for three minutes I think I already said that then you disconnect that um, and basically again what they ask you to do is to disconnect that and then you will have your connection here with a special box which you already done before you, you don't touch it yet um, they ask you to disconnect this connection here so you can well to remove this cable you kind of have to take this one out anyway so once you remove this cable here then what they ask you to do is to check the resistance in here so I think a few minutes gone past now I'm gonna disconnect this here okay so this is the cable we want to use this is where the special cable from Honda will go into the little 2 ohms uh, box that they they also have that simulates um, this area here or this this side airbag thing it simulates it um, so um, what they ask you to do is so your your equipment will be connected here they ask you to disconnect the cable from the little 2 ohms machine and measure the resistance and that resistance needs to be below 1 um, so um, to measure that I had to I use this I just connected um, this in there <coughs> like so I put one in, in that hole and then I put my other cable in the other side um, so obviously I, ha I had this this was disconnected and that was disconnected measure the resistance and then it was reading below one ohm it, it was almost zero to be honest so there was no resistance on the wiring as such um, at which point uh, they ask you to well they say either the <clears throat> connections are dirty which is why there is no um, the, the airbag light is on so they ask you to you can clean the connections reconnect everything and then try to delete the fault code again if you're not successful that way then uh, 
is is a matter of uh, connecting uh, changing the SRS now for connecting the SRS again they ask you to follow a specific procedure um, at this moment in time I don't know if this needs coding or not but maybe it's because we need to follow the procedure what they ask you to do is again disconnect the battery like I did and then they ask you to disconnect all of these cables so disconnect this one disconnect that one and the two on the other side so the two on the other side are the same as this one also one in here which I'm probably going to do now because that's what I'm going to I need to do myself I need to follow those instructions so there is an SRS cable in there this one so I'm just gonna have to disconnect that and then I'll show you uh, show you guys how I did it um, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all the cables and then I'll, I'll show you okay so let's disconnect um, the airbag the cable now I sort of figured out how to disconnect it <clears throat> And basically, this this one here, we need to pull on the on the yellow tab. It's like a spring. So let's get that a little bit in there. I'm basically pulling on that and that is like a it's like a spring type of thing it goes back and it releases the the connection and I have the same uh, so it's gonna be the same on this side so to access that cable you need to remove this three Phillips screws and then detach this little clips from the top here from the top cover and it will just uh, come down you will then see the same sort of arrangement in here which basically again we just need to push on that and that should disconnect itself so it might be a little bit harder do it with one hand <laughs> so I could push with one hand on this side and the other one on the other side so I'll do that okay so that came out that's disconnected there so like I said you just need to push it on the sides and it will disconnect it's like a little spring um, now I've disconnected all of the airbag connections driver's side passenger side under the seat uh, and also the inflator at the seat belt um, and I disconnected that one there and this one here now the instructions ask you to um, remove these connections which basically we need to pull on the on these white tabs here get that out so only the thing is my um, unit here is already I already loosened the, the bolts so which are uh, torques So you remove that and then you connect technically the new one in 
in there. And in case you're wondering, they ask you to put the Torx screws back in there. And they are torqued to 9.8 Newton meters basically. So they specifically they tell you the torque but also they say make sure the unit is sitting properly under those screws and so then you can torque those to the correct torquing um, then they ask you to connect these connectors first sitting in properly and then so then they ask you to well they ask you to refit the whole center console back in um, then in terms of procedure they ask you to reconnect the drivers airbag first so I'm gonna try to get that connection back in there let me just uh, use my I'm not gonna need my two hands for this. Can get it rolled up uh, maybe. Okay, I got that one in. Let's do the other side. The other side will be the same sort of procedure. Need to just need to uh, plug it back in, basically. Okay, so again, I may need my two hands, or just uh, this. Right hand to press it in. Okay. Yep. That's in there. Uh, then the next thing they say is connect the. So they say yeah, connect the side, side airbag connectors. So hold on. Okay. So the side airbag connectors are these ones actually. The ones that go under the seat here. So let's connect that. That's one of them. And then we'll do this one as well. This one goes. See how it comes. In there. And then. Connect these ones. They are like spring loaded or something. Okay. Okay, I've got everything connected and now they ask you to reconnect the battery negative. So, um, so now I can switch on this machine and uh, see how we get on. Okay, so I just started the car. Um, got the airbag light on. I'm just uh, getting this going. <coughs> and see if we can erase it turn the ignition switch off turn the ignition switch on
Okay, so uh, I'm getting a phone call that says uh, SRS unit replacement. Um, so I don't know if I can actually clear that or not, really. I may need to do... Um, that may require some coding. Because otherwise we follow the... Um, procedure for uh, replacing the unit okay so um, basically what's happened I've got um, the replacement SRS unit I got from eBay was faulty um, it had a fault code that related uh, related to the car had been in an accident the one that it was removed from so I had to send it back and I bought another one from another uh, seller. Um, so again, this is, this is my original one. Um, I just had to make sure I get the exactly the same part number, this number here. So if you're going to replace yours, then make sure this number is the same. Um, because there is lots of these ones, but uh, with different numbers. So... I, I just wonder if, if you're not matching the number, maybe you need to do some coding. But if you have the exact same number, I don't think you need any coding. Anyway, so I just plugged in the uh, replacement. Um, so like I said, this is a different one. Um, not, the, not the original one I plugged in. Um, but hopefully um, that will help. I've, I've just connected the battery. <coughs> and the airbag light is on. Oh, okay, so it went off. So the airbag light went off on its own. I didn't have to reset anything. I didn't have to plug the computer again or do anything else um, so in this case it was definitely uh, a problem relating to the SRS unit um, so hopefully the videos will help you diagnose your issue I had a I obviously checked the the seat um, sensor there the, the one on the side for the seat belt, I've disconnected all the sensors um, and then concluded that I had a faulty SRS unit and I can just say that, I can just confirm that it was that. So in the end, I hope this video helps. Thank you for watching. I just need to put everything back now um, and don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.